we're up Spearfish Canyon right now, uh, climbing natural ice flows. Oh, the places you can go. With an ax in your hand and spikes on your shoes, you can create an adventure anywhere that you choose. We started at Bridal Veil Falls, which is a, a popular place to see a 100-foot waterfall in the summer. Uh, in the wintertime, it freezes up quite nice, uh, becomes a very moderate ice climb. We have a grading system from water ice one to water ice five, and it's right around the two plus range. Uh, so it's a good intro for people. When I was in college, that was the very first ice climb I ever got to try. Buckman jokes that he packed four years of college into six and a half years at Black Hill State University. And when he was or wasn't going to class, he dreamed of climbing. It was addictive from the beginning. It fit with my personality type. Uh, it was very empowering. And also the, the connections you make with people are powerful. You can be with a stranger and when you share a rope and the same experience with one another, trusting your lives together, uh, you usually end up with a hug as opposed to a handshake. Buckman has worked as a climbing ranger for the National Park Service. Right on, dude. He's been a wilderness EMT and a search and rescue technician. A few years ago, he started his own guide service. We operate throughout the Black Hills in Custer State Park, Spearfish Canyon, Devil's Tower. Uh, we also offer trips as far away as Joshua Tree. We take people into the mountains uh, over in Grand Teton National Park. Uh, we also have options in the Bighorns of Wyoming. So we're one of the only companies that really can offer that kind of variety depending on what a person's adventure is. A majority of our guiding is rock climbing. Uh, ice climbing holds a, an appeal to very few uh, just because you really do have to learn to appreciate it being uncomfortable. Uh, your fingers and toes are just gonna get cold. That's what happens. And it can be dangerous working with a very fragile medium. Picking safe ice conditions is important. You're looking for nice, white, solid ice, nothing that's really chandeliered or aerated. Uh, when ice is really dark, that indicates that it's very wet and then it's not bonding to the rock that well. You know, so ultimately we're always trying to find a cold day to hide from the sun. That makes 11th Hour Gulch a good spot, a little canyon off the main canyon that presents a different challenge than the waterfall. So the gulch here is just natural runoff off the side. And when it comes time to climbing here, the ice is much steeper. Uh, it's thinner, not as tall, but it makes for a pretty good athletic endeavor. Uh, you really have to be on your feet a lot more. And when it comes time to picking the ice here, uh, the lower half doesn't see sun, and so it can stay in relatively good condition. Uh, but the upper half of the gulch gets a lot of sun, and you've got to be really wary about what conditions are, uh, you know, just a few feet above you uh, to make sure that it is safe so that you can top out. Ice climbing takes planning and patience and balance and nimbleness and courage and determination and perseverance. And modern equipment does help a lot. With our feet, we have crampons on. They have uh, similar spikes on the front of them. We're aggressively kicking into the ice. Uh, that way you can get your body weight on your feet so that your arms aren't trying to hold you up the whole time. Being able to use a modern ice axe like this is very advantageous for the fact that you've always got a good hold with your hands. It's just a matter of making sure that this shaft and pick penetrate the ice far enough to hold your body weight. And when you're swinging, sometimes it's not one swing. You're having to do it three, four, five times to get it in there. Um, the nice part is, if you've ever swung a hammer, this is the most precise, balanced instrument you've ever swung. And so you can hit the same spot multiple times. You've got the climber, you've got his partner who is the belayer, they act as a counterweight. And in tandem together, you can climb safely. For Buckman and Tomas, his climbing companion this day, there is literally always another mountain to climb, another challenge, and a chance to experience the joy of earning a view from the top. At the end of the climb, you and your partner have this view that you've earned, that not a lot of people have had the opportunity to see, and you've shared that special moment between each other and then it's just you know it's kind of gone you go and do it again and it, it's the repetition of that that there's never been a day wasted when you realize you've spent it climbing